<clears throat> Hello, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. I'm really excited that I have got Jules Galloway with us today. Now, Jules has recently moved from Byron Bay up across the border into Queensland, and she's loving the change, but she's saying she's a bit cold. <laughs> Maybe you should have warned her, Queensland. Um, but Jules Galloway works online. So, of course, she can work from anywhere. She's been purely online for about the last seven years. She had a dispensary in Byron Bay, but they've decided to go country and they've got themselves a nice little spread there. But you know what Jules does? She works online. She works, she does e-courses and she has a podcast. So she has her own podcast, the Straight Talking Natural Health. And uh, which is very cool. And she speaks to lots of other naturopaths there. And she's a speaker. She does webinars. And she's been a naturopath for 15 years. And she really likes working with complex cases and those and women who are exhausted, who, you know, all of the things are wrong and nobody can figure out what's wrong with them because she really likes to nut out those cases. So I've asked Jules along to talk to us today about working online and how that all came about and how things have been going with her because she's very cool if you haven't met her you're not following her podcast you have to start <laughs> <laughs> so Jules tell us about working online and how it all came about and what the struggles are the good things the bad things do you know the working online came about out of a, a need to go my own way and I have told this story before. We won't name names. So uh, I had worked in corporate naturopathy in Melbourne, mm -hmm. working for some decent-sized vitamin companies, supplement companies, and I just spectacularly burned out. I was doing, like, really long hours. I was doing training, education, product management, like all these crazy corporate things and a lot of travel. And it got to this point where I one, one time lost my car in the car park at Melbourne Airport at 7 p.m. And I was just walking laps and laps around this car park, crying, going, I can't do this anymore. I'm exhausted. And I, yes, spectacularly burned out in Melbourne. And so we moved to Byron Bay. And I took six months off and while I decided to figure out what the hell I was going to do next. I didn't want to just hang up a shingle in a new town and be like oh look here I am like with all the other naturopaths like let's go get some clients because I thought I don't want to step on any toes I want to get to know the lay of the land I I don't want to come out of the blocks too hard before I get to know the other naturopaths like I want to collaborate with them not compete with them and so I sat around for about six months and I did a couple of health food shop type jobs and just potted around and it was at the point where I was offered $17 an hour to work in a health food shop. We won't oh. name names, but oh. I'm sure some local people might know who this oh. person is. But I was offered, yes, oh. I was offered $17 an hour to work on my ABN, which means no sick pain, no superannuation, no work cover, nothing. And and they had a full dispensary with all the usual brands, like the big white label black brands and the liquid herbs and the proper dispensing. Yeah. And I said, how much? <laughs> and he <laughs> said, well, if you bring lots of business in and you show that you're an asset to this business, maybe in six months' time we can put it up to the $19 an hour. And I was like, Absolutely. Forget no that. Move on. Love. Way. Off you go. No way. So, so that I also had a very sick dog at the time who couldn't be left home alone for long hours. And I thought, that's it. I've got to figure out something that I can do from mm. home. And yep. that's how the whole online part of Jules Galloway was born because it was out of a, a need to find something to do from home a need to find something to do from a regional area where jobs were scarce and I didn't want to step on toes and I didn't want to fish in that pond yep. for clients because it's just, it's, it's a small pond. I thought yeah. that my clients are everywhere but Byron Bay. And yes. so, and then the other thing was this, this desire to stick it up that that person to basically stick my middle finger up at that, that person who offered me $17 an hour and go, no, I'm worth more than that. Way more. We all are. You know, you've got the degree, you've got the education, you've got the training, you've got the background. Who in their right mind would even start by offering $17 an hour? What criminal? It's awe. literally criminal. 
crim- it is criminal. It's yeah, it is totally criminal because we do have laws in place for how much mm, minimum wages it's called and an that, award, yes. Uh, and that doesn't even reach any of that award. So not even my, close. <clears throat> my daughter working in a pizza bar um, earns more than that. So yeah. My husband was working as a barista and he was getting about $28 an hour at the time. And he said, You need to earn more than me per hour or don't go. And I was 100%. like, okay, there's the benchmark. It's yeah. that, that's, that's where the bar is set. It's set, you know, $28 yeah. an hour or more. And this guy was offering me like $11 less than that. And I was like, no, 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 no. So you started working online. How did you start? I mean, did you just like put your shingle out online? What was your first, like, how do I do this moment? What was your, you know, because I kind of think it was a bit easier for me when I went online, I'd been working in practice I'd been working from home and it was my I had clients who couldn't see me because they had broken so I mean I've I've been on the telephone to people and doing telephone consults to people I know knew already and then it just sort of developed being online because they wanted to be on Skype so mine just segued into it Mm. and then I started mentoring and discovered Zoom and off I went but for you you're suddenly like I've got a sick dog I've got you know I'm in a new place I'm in a new town I've just been given that, I mean, that's actually rude. I've just right. had someone slap me and mm-hmm. say that I am of no value. And so how did you go home and go, right, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. What was your, what was that? I don't know. You sat down, you mean, I've got my computer, but how did you actually mm. put it out to the world? Google how Google. to start a blog. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that was what I did. But also... Remember, I was still quite burned out from being in Melbourne and it was only six or nine months later at that point. And Mm. I also didn't really want to see clients one-on-one at that point. So I thought, right, I'm going to make a blog and then I'm going to monetize it, Mm. of course. So I Googled how to start a blog and I started my first website. And that happened to coincide with helping a cousin with her daughter who had a whole lot of food allergies. Mm -hmm. So the blog that I started was all about helping people with food allergies. And there was a lot of food and a lot of recipes because at that time, like so much has happened in the last seven to 10 years in the online world. So this feels like the olden days, even though it wasn't even a decade ago, I was like, oh, I feel like I'm coming in with my walking stick and going, in my day, we had WordPress and <laughs> we put I know. up. <laughs> and it's even in the last two, it's even like the last two years that it is quadruple, dribble, you know, it's just like a million yeah. times more in the last two years than just two years ago. So yeah. seven years ago, we really were back at the beginning and there weren't the people online. There, wa- there wasn't even yeah. delivery from companies, really. I think one company, I think, delivered. Yeah. But, you know, it was hard to do. It was really hard to organise. You had to ring. There was one um, bigger company and you'd ring them and then or you could <laughs> fill out a form and fax it to them. <laughs> Faxing. <laughs> order. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, so, yeah, the landscape was very different. Not that many people were blogging and, and, and turning up in the online world and starting mm-hmm. Facebook pages compared to now. Like we've come so far in such a short time. We have to remember this. But I, I did a business course which helped me come along in leaps and bounds. Uh, it was Marie Forleo's B School. It's a, oh, yeah. a US course. And yep. it's all about teaching heart-centered entrepreneurs to basically live their passion, get their message out into the world and then monetize it and charge what they're worth. So I was like, yep, I'll do that. I literally spent my last dollar on it. So it was luckily the Australian, this is another old fashioned one. Remember the good old days when the Australian dollar was at parity for a short time with the US dollar. Well, that (laughs) coincided with me doing this US course. So that that course cost a few thousand dollars and I chose a payment plan and it was literally draining my bank account. I think at one stage it drained my bank account down to $10, right? Like I spent literally my last dollar on that course and I was like, this better work. This is, but I also thought if I've got, if I've got this burning desire to get a message out into the world and I want to help people and I want to make a a career and a living out of this, but not just make a living, but thrive. And because I figured the more people I could help, the more money I make, but also the more people that get better. So I thought if I can get all these messages out into the world and help people, like we all win. So Mm -hmm. 
I thought it's worth spending my last dollar on because that's it's like rolling the dice and if I don't roll the dice like what am I going to do so yeah. off I went into the online world did this did this course and then that helped me to start looking at ways of, of building this this following and building my list because they teach you in this course to build your mailing list don't just rely yeah. on Facebook don't just rely on social yeah. media you have to, mm. the, your list is the only thing that you will ever own that no one can take away from you. So I started building my list and I did that by like giving away recipes. And then I started selling eBooks for like $20 that were like recipe eBooks. And so all this time I was still like, I don't see clients. I don't see clients. I don't see clients. I'm too tired. I'm too burned out. I don't want to look after people one-on-one. No, 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 no. And people kept asking. They kept emailing. They kept messaging. They kept asking, do you see clients? Do you see clients? Do you see clients? And at first I was just referring them out to friends, right, left and center. Like, oh, this person's really good. This person's great. Like, don't come and see me. I'm really busy. I'm a blogger. Uh, but then eventually I thought, what am I doing? These people want me. Mm -hmm. So yep. Skype appointments were the next step. Yep. And so, so it was like this progression, everything led to something which led to something which led to something. I was also doing live events in Byron Bay where I would take people on tours to farms in little mini bus and we'd stop at the farms and talk to the farmers about organic farming, wow. pick up the veggies from the farm and then we'd take all the veggies and the fruit back to this hall and I would get a raw food chef in and we would make this amazing lunch out of whatever we, we picked up along the way and they were doing really well and they but they were exhausting yeah and then I was doing raw food high tea because I was really into food at that time because I my message was to get people eating gluten-free dairy-free cutting mm -hmm. the cane sugar eating whole foods and so I started these raw food high teas I basically started creating the things that I would like to do I was like oh I wish mm -hmm. someone would give me a tour of where all the farms are in Byron Bay oh I wish someone would make a high tea for me where I could actually eat everything at that high <laughs> tea and and they were they also sold out they were doing really really well and I was wow. doing food workshops and that was great but they're exhausting yes. exhausting and I was also doing raw food chefing we will use the term chefing very loosely because I'm actually <laughs> a chef, but we can't say raw food cooking because you don't cook, <laughs> you're just preparing. But yes, I was doing raw food <clears throat> chefing at uh, detox retreats as well. So I was catering and doing like 13 hour days on my feet to make the money to spend on doing online courses and doing my blog and, and paying for a graphic designer to make me a logo. And like everything was being poured back into this business. That's the and thing so, that always happens, isn't it? We always have to, especially in those first few years when we're developing and coming up with stuff, we've got to pour the money in. And yep. so there has to be a side job. There has to be another job. So I had nursing and I was paying for all the things out of the nursing so that I could, you know, get everything up and running. And then eventually the nursing money went into the household because the money from the business was then able to do the website and do the things. But it's still, you've got to keep, it, it's a while. It's not, and you know, overnight thing. <laughs> Yeah, what do they when, say? How many years does it take to become an overnight success? Because five, I think, isn't people it? only notice you when you pop up looking amazing, but they don't mm -hmm. see all the back work. There's this thing, is it called Wayback Machine or something like that? It's a cache search where you can actually go back and look at people's websites and they show you the cached version from years ago. Yeah, I know. Shocking. Oh, yes. I need to so, go and clear that cache. No, you can't. It's there oh. forever. Oh. Oh. I know. So I've if you go to sitting back right, there. Oh. everyone, <laughs> let's go look at Geraldine's old website. Oh. <laughs> but, but this is what I often tell some of my mentees to do. Because yeah. when you're starting your naturopathic practice and your business and you're putting your, your new website up and you're creating social media feed, mm. oh, my Lord, none of us came out of the blocks looking perfect like that. Like, okay, maybe Lola Berry did, but I don't know anyone else. So, yeah, so and I bet you even her case search would reveal that, that things didn't start out perfectly. Yeah. No one starts out perfectly. So yeah. I was using this case search to go and look up people that I admired in the industry but look up what website they had when they were starting out. And, oh, Lordy, it's a revel it's absolute revelation mm -hmm. and a lesson in perfectionism because 
you you're sitting there going oh I can't put this out into the world because it doesn't look as good as other people's it's not as polished it's not as professional Mm. my logo you can tell it only cost a few hundred dollars to get that designed it's not amazing the branding's not amazing oh my god my photos are not profesh like ah Mm. but then you have to start somewhere so fun fact if you go and do a case search on julesgalloway.com or Geraldine's website you will find that it didn't look perfect when we started out either Mm. But the difference is we, we started. We started somewhere and then we yeah. had some, a foundation to build on. And then when you get a little bit more money or you get a bit, more, I, a bit more of an idea of how to style things better or brand things better, then you take the next step and the next step and the next step. And then one day you turn up looking like an overnight success but the, the thing that the thing that, that gave me the shits the most but also it was hilarious but it gave me the shits in equal yeah. amounts was when I'd run into someone or chat with someone that I hadn't seen for a year or two and they'd say oh you're doing well <laughs> and I'd be like yes my website does look good doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> but they immediately equate that to you you must be making lots of money and you must have loads of clients and you must be reaching lots of people because it looks good. Yeah. And I think that's called fake it till you make it, kids. Yeah. No, yeah. The thing is though, you have to look good to attract the clients ultimately. And sometimes when we start out, we need to look a little bit rough around the edges because too many clients, too much interest will actually burn us out because you were heading into burnout there again, weren't you? You were all of your oh, yeah. chefing at 13 hour days and all the rest of it. You're heading straight back into burnout. And so sometimes it's better that we are a little bit, um, not sketchy, but a little bit rough around the edges on these things so that we can work to build it up and build it up so that then we can afford that really good logo. We can afford that amazing. I mean, I've just got a brand new website myself. Go and check it out, please. Congratulations. <laughs> and um, so it takes time to, and to find the right people as well. So, mm. I mean, right back in the day, the, the uh, WordPress was hard at the best of times. And then the people who were doing it was all, you had to do your HTML, you had to code. Yeah, do you remember writing code? All right, here, I'll come in with my walking stick again. In my day, we had to learn code, kids. Yeah, oh, (laughs) typing code, oh, please. And then, oh, no, let's not go there. No, I've still got some sort of, yes. (laughs) (laughs) I'm breaking out in a cold sweat. Absolutely, absolutely. Because if you got one thing wrong in that code, you could break your whole website and then... (laughs) Then you had to pay someone to fix it. And those fixing people were never cheap because they knew you were screwed without them. They'd be like, right, we are $200 an hour to fix this. And I'd be like, (gasps) it's like like when you break your car. Yeah. (laughs) And there were very few of them. So now, of course, there's tons of them. You can outsource. Outsourcing is amazing now. There's so many avenues to be thinking, how can I do this? I mean, Marie Folio, there's lots of courses out there to help us to make sure that we do go online and we don't have to. I mean, I just sort of did it all from scratch, but I was told you know hey you have to be I I, um, had a a session with you once and I was like how do I get these things to connect because that's the thing isn't it sometimes you just need someone to help you to get things to connect you need another brain to go yep 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 go and do this and your thing you said to me I was like yeah I've got this this Facebook groups and you're like we'll just ask them for their email addresses I was like, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought of doing that. <laughs> simple. So, you know, like really simple so that you can stay in contact with people and you can tell them what you're up to and what you're doing, which is one of the simple questions right at the beginning. And I'd had my Facebook group running for, I don't know how long prior to that. Well, I've got one that it's added to, but the other one, the newer Facebook group, been running six, eight months by then. And I was just like, oh, how am I supposed to contact these people? What am I supposed to do? And I was just like, Geraldine, just ask them for their email. And, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Why didn't I think? But of see, that? when when you're in it, it's like mm. swimming through vegetable soup, and you can't quite see what what order and and what to do. And then someone just comes in who's experienced, who who knows things, who's done these things before. Sometimes that person just comes in, looks at everything for a few minutes, and then just drops the bomb. Like, oh, you just need to do this, and you'll be like, why didn't I see that? And that's why mm. I think everyone needs either a mentor or a mastermind group or something. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter how much marketing stuff you know, how much business stuff you know, how much, how confident you are. It doesn't matter any Mm. of that. Sometimes Mm. you can't see what you need to see, even if it's like 
glaringly obvious if it was someone else's business you could walk in and, and fix it for them straight away but when it's your own thing it's and, and it's a bit like being a naturopath like I know we do it we all do it but we shouldn't be naturopathing ourselves yeah because what happens when you're trying to unravel your own case you can't see you can't see clearly because it's too subjective and you see you see too many things all at once yeah. and you need to take that case to another naturopath and they will boil it down in five minutes and go, blah, 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 what you need to do is this. And yeah. you'd be like, if that was my client, I would have seen that so clearly. But when it's you, you can't. Business is the same. Yeah. So it's the same with building your business. It's the same with your health. It's the same with all of the things. Sometimes we need outside help to do yeah. it. Yeah. We don't naturopath outside. yourself. Don't mentor yourself yeah yeah <laughs> I and need to remember that <laughs> <laughs> I mean the thing is it's we've got um when I was lecturing and I would lecture the final years so just as they were finishing and I'd say right you're all here it's our last class we're having a you know some non-alcoholic or alcoholic <clears> maybe what the day was. um you know in class so you know and our raw vegan snacks and um I'd be like have you all made a group yet and they'd like, look at me. And I go, you're all about to qualify. You know, if one of you buys a bottle of, I always use the example of blue flag or something where you only, you're only literally putting five mils in a bottle or Thuya, you put five mils in a Poke bottle. Root. Poke root. <laughs> Poke root is the best one. You put hardly any of them. A 500 ml bottle of poke root will last you your entire career unless you buy it with a group of people because you just don't use any of it. So I'm like, guys, have you made that group? Have you, you know, contact? And they're like, oh, Oh yeah, I'm like, just make a messenger chat now or make a Facebook group so that you can ask those questions and that when one of you needs to buy something like Poke Root, you can share the bottle. And it's the same. And then you've got other support networks. And at the moment I'm in a group and one of the girls is like, hey, let's have, let's have a mastermind session. So we're currently all struggling to find a date and a time that suits everyone. But it means that there's that other outlet, there's that other group. And you do need people who are more advanced and you know than you are, but it's great to have that group right from the beginning so you can go, what if I brought a few people? So yesterday I was mentoring someone and she said, if I brought a few people to you, Geraldine, could we do a mentor? I'm like, yeah, totally. Yes. Like, yeah, figure Absolutely. it out. You figure it out, I'm there, girl. You know, and um, and it's all of those sorts of the bigger picture things that we find out from other people when we're chatting and when we're we're doing the things isn't it so. yes and and you and I are in a very special messenger group as well Maria. which does which does have some some uh like-minded peers in it yes and yes. it's also a great place to ask the questions that yeah you don't want to ask on a bigger Facebook page or forum because yeah. we know those, those Facebook pages are out there and they're amazing. But sometimes you've just, you're, you're on your fifth client of the day, yeah. your brain's a little bit fuzzy and you know that you should know the answer to this and you don't dare ask in the open because damn it, then they're going to all know that I'm a fraud. So yeah. where can I go and ask for a quick bit of help? Like, you know, guys, can you, can someone just please put their eyes on this for one second and tell me what I, yeah. Do I give this herb or this herb? Or what do you think of this pathology test? Or has anyone heard of this health condition? And has anyone treated it because like, I've never seen this before, or I've heard of it, but I've never given herbs for this. And yeah. so you need, you. I think everyone needs that little power group yeah. of like-minded people who are all at sim, all in similar places to where they are professionally, so that you can just like, Go on there and ask ask for help, have a bit of banter, drop in some studies that, oh, have you seen this study that came out today? What do you all think of this? Has anyone read this news today? Um, oh, my God, like my client's mum just died. What do we do when something like that happens? Like does anyone know of a nice gift I could send? Like just mm. everyday support like that is yeah. so, so powerful. Because then when you're, because like so many of them, nearly, so nearly all of us are working online at the moment to some mm. extent. So like if, because of COVID, like Zoom appointments are very normal now, but what it does is, as practitioners is it can make us feel quite isolated because you're not just walking out into the dispensary and chatting with the person behind the counter, or you're not meeting up with people in the same way that you used to. But if you've got that group that you can go to in between clients or at the end of the day, 
and either have a little vent or ask for help or just have a bit of fun and banter, then you feel like you're still part of something and that, that you've got, someone's got your back. Yeah. And that can make you feel so much more confident and, and you can go about your daily business feeling mm. like you've got that little safety net for yeah. all those reasons, whether it's just someone to pep you up or someone to pick you up or whatever it is. I think it's such a powerful, powerful thing and not enough practitioners are doing it. Yeah, totally. Totally agree. We need to have more of it, you know, more connection with each other and more positive connection. There's a lot of negativity in the groups because there's a lot of angst. and yeah, um, Which and we makes to... it hard to ask for help because yeah. you think, oh my God, there's people are watching. And if I say the right, wrong thing, it's going to turn into a bun fight. And I don't want a bun fight. I just want to know the answer. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, you know, and people comment as well. So some, you know, often it'll be which um, product people prefer for sleep this brand or this brand, you know this product or this product and then every so often someone will put in there oh I think it's dreadful that people are just asking for brands well how else are you going to find out the rep is only going to tell you that their brand is the best mm -hmm. so you need to ask the bigger group to say what is everyone else finding so that I can give I can try the right product for my client and then because people go well I prefer this one because of this 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 reason or I find this one works for these these, these people but then there's that one person who'll be all pious and holier than thou and say oh how awful how can you ask these things and then that person will never post again you know and so if they've got a group that they can go in there and go well, what do you think comparative this product to this product for sleep and half of them, oh, I love that one. I love that one. I love that one. I have actually tried that one, but I haven't used it for long enough to tell you yet. Oh, okay. Then I'll go with the known one until somebody knows the other one, or maybe I'll try the new one. But mm -hmm. you don't get that angst coming back at you. Yeah. Oh, how could you post that? But also, like, I do sometimes still post in those big groups when mm. I want input from people who are outside my circle because sometimes, oh, yeah. sometimes you can get a bit insular if you've surrounded yourself with like minded people. Yeah. you all end up a bit like each other so sometimes it is good but when you you're right when you do post in those groups you need the confidence to be able to be like teflon and yeah. if if someone criticizes you in some way that's about them that's not yeah. about you and it's not making you look bad at all it's actually a reflection on them and if they if they want to be that way that's their thing but yeah. also like you've got to be prepared when you show up in the online world in open forums like it's open season yeah. and, and so I think we do need to put on our little suit of armor or a little a little teflon cape and and yeah. get out there anyway it's good yeah. practice for the outside world oh totally it's good practice for showing up online as yeah. ourselves on our own Facebook pages and Instagram pages as well but yeah you're right sometimes you just go not today, Satan. I'm just yeah. not going to do that today. I'm yeah. just going to go and ask my friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go and ask my friends. And the thing is, though, you can ask your friends, and if you still don't get the answer or enough answers, then you can go into the Facebook group because you really have got a better understanding. So, mm. you know, but at the end of the day, any Facebook group is still uh, just a bite sized answer, but at yeah. least you'll get it off a dozen people, hopefully, your answer. So yeah. that always helps because at least you'll get a few that you like, even if you get a few dreadful ones. And but, I believe in good karma too, Geraldine. Mm -hmm. So if you're going and asking for help in those Facebook groups, and this is something that Marie Folio always says as well, mm -hmm. if you're turning up and asking for help in a group like that, stick around afterwards and go and help three other people. So go and look Please. for three other recent threads where you could contribute or make a note to, to go back in there tomorrow and look for something that you can contribute to. Or if you can't contribute in terms of your knowledge, contribute to the cheerleading if someone's in there saying, oh, I've just had the worst day and my client didn't come back. Like even just going in and adding something positive to that thread to help G that person up for the next, you know, to, to steal them up again. Yeah. So if, if you're going in and asking for help in a place like that, make sure that you contribute to the good karma and yeah. go in there and serve and serve and serve so that it, and if you're, if you're in there being the positive person who does serve, that that will reflect on you as well yeah. and people will then stick up for you in yeah. those spaces if they see some if you if they see you copying some flack in some way so yeah. you you have to have that reciprocal relationship too, oh, and totally. then it works much better totally in the groups totally when you see people constantly asking and never giving it's tiresome and then after a little while you see that nobody's answering for them nobody's commenting on their post 
because they're not giving back. So, you know, you, you take, but you give. And if they're not giving, nobody will answer. They'll have zero comments. It's just like, oh, can't be bothered with her. She's always asking questions, moving on, moving on. You know, yeah, if, she never if, gives back. As if she'd answer me, if I put something in there, I won't bother with her. So, yeah, totally reciprocate. It's big. Reciprocation is big. Yeah. Now, this is meant to be the Bite Size Podcast. And, oops. Um, oops. So <laughs> I hope that all the listeners <laughs> have really enjoyed this because this has got to be a record for me, possibly one of my longest ones ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big bite. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge bite. So, yeah, I hope that... <laughs> I'll so stop hope talking you... now. <laughs> so it's a huge bite today. It's not just the bite size. It's the big bite. It's the huge piece of cake today that we hope that you all enjoyed because I am going to let you go now and um, let Jules go as well. But thank you all so much for being here. If you have enjoyed today, don't forget a nice little five-star rating wouldn't go amiss along with a little comment. Don't forget that. That would be fab. So I'm going to say goodbye to Jules and thank you so much, Jules, for being with us today. No worries at all. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>